السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم، الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين ونصلي ونسلم على أفضل الخلق أجمعين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد. As always we commence by praising Allah سبحانه وتعالى for He alone is in absolute control of every single aspect of existence no matter how much we praise Him it won't be enough. يا الله all praise is due to you and none but you, for indeed you are the owner of praise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us. We also send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless his entire household and all his companions and every single one of us who are here this evening. May Allah bless us and our offspring, those to come up to the day of Qiyamah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us every reason to smile. And may He protect us from the reasons to be sad, besides the fact that we be turning away from Him, that should make us sad. Brothers and sisters, marriage is a hot topic, because I read a few days ago, they say getting married is like jumping into a hot bath, or having a hot shower. As soon as you get in, you know, it's very hot when you get in. Once you get in, it's no longer that hot. Allah May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and grant us ease. Moments ago, we heard the brother who spoke about a marriage site. Sometimes it becomes difficult for brothers and sisters to get to meet. The difficulty is, a lot of those on Shadi.com happen to be married people. <laughs> this is a reality. People are now registering their names just to flirt. So he's quite right. To be honest with you, we deal as counselors and social workers with crises of this nature. And we find that many, I used to think it was only men, maybe more men, but it's not only confined to men. They just have a little bit of fun. And the reason why they have a little bit of fun, which actually leads to a lot of destruction, is because of another message I saw today, which I want to share with you again. They say, when your marriage lacks communication or trust, then it becomes like a phone without network. What do you do when your phone has no network? You play games on that phone. <laughs> Wallahi, this is a reality. So you need communication, you need trust. And this is when you preserve your marriage. My brother, Look at the sister you are married to and tell yourself this is somebody's daughter. Tell yourself she is a very respectable, lovable child who was brought up from birth, given birth to by a mother who also suffered through that childbirth. And tell yourself after such time I came about and I took her in my marriage and today I'm making her suffer. Today I look at her and make her cry. Today I say statements to her that are actually disastrous. Is that what marriage life is all about? And vice versa. My sister, the brother you are married to, he is also someone's brother. He is someone's child. Do not make him suffer. When you look at him and when he looks at you, there should be reason for you to smile. Make each other's lives easy. And no matter who you marry, they will also become old if Allah has given you life. And so will you. And this is why those who keep on living in this age of, you know, the difficulty is we are living in an age of everything disposable. You know, your cups are disposable, your plates are disposable, your nappies to start with from birth are now disposable. We used to use the durable ones, you know, they wash, put them back. No matter how messy it was, they wash, put them back. Allahu Akbar. But our backsides are even cleaner. May Allah protect us. Because you have a disposable nappy, a little while later, it's out. Thereafter, you have something else. A while later, it's out. People have things. A while later, upgraded. Because you have a phone, your network, you expect them to upgrade it. And so what happens? It seeps through into our marriages. But that is one thing that is not supposed to be disposable. Because if you think your marriage is disposable, then you have a life that will be full of sorrow, full of stress. You will be searching for the purpose of life and you won't know it. The purpose of life is in order to serve the Almighty. You will be able to serve the Almighty when you understand, let me be happy with what is apportioned to me. I made my mind up, I decided, and Alhamdulillah, this is what it will be, and I will work on it as best as I can. This is why the issue of divorce in Islam is frowned upon very strongly, but at times it's looked at as a means of mercy. Some faiths get married, never ever is the person allowed to break that marriage, come what may. 
And some faiths, you're not even allowed to marry again after the death of your spouse. You know that? When it comes to Islam, if your marriage has been broken beyond repair, the first thing you need to do is, well, if your marriage is suffocating, you need to talk to each other, try and resolve it behind closed doors without telling people. The minute you tell people your problem from day one, meaning it's just started, and a few minutes later you phone in your mom, mom, this is what happened. The problem is going to compound. Because mom loves you so much, she's going to say, fix him up. I know, it's happened to even the, the best of people, where they've contacted their moms and mom loves them so much, and says, no, fix him up. You know what to do? Throw him out of the door. Lock it out. So mom doesn't know I'm living 300 miles down south and here I'm locking him out and it's creating a bigger disaster and she thinks my daughter's going to fix him up. My mother, your daughter is replaceable according to the brain of that man, especially when he does, when she does that. So be careful. Be careful of your advice. Be careful. Make sure you know how to handle it. But the difficulty is with us. Why do you complain straight away to a human being? Complain to Allah and try to resolve the matter. Communication is so important. You, what is the point of a mobile phone without network? Subhanallah. A mobile phone is there to talk. You don't have network, you're missing out on the three minutes, my brother. <laughs> my sister, today I heard that you can have unlimited phone calls within the UK just with a small amount of pounds a month. And I'm thinking, Ya ilaha al alameen, if we could use the same idea just to communicate with our spouses, I think, subhanallah, we would resolve half the matters. Today we are happy to have unlimited calls to speak to people who are not at home with you. And the sister at home or the brother at home is going to struggle and suffer. Why? Because we have spent all that time on orange instead of on mango. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> we spend it on orange and on everything else. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. It's, this is the reality in the house. We don't speak to one another. And the sisters are even guilty of sometimes sitting on the phone hours on end without even thinking for a minute, what am I doing? I have a spouse, but sometimes they are driven to that because he comes back from work. First thing is now no longer the newspaper, but the television. Flick, flick, flick. And after that, the phone. And what happens? Click, click, click. And after that, he's off to bed. In fact, no longer off to bed. He's snoring on the couch. Allahu Akbar. My brothers and sisters, this is not how a Muslim home should be. This is not what Muslim marriages are all about. This is not marital life. If you have a problem, initially try and resolve it within yourselves. If you notice it's getting worse, seek help. Yes, you may seek help from your parent, you may seek help from someone close to you, but don't advertise the weakness. And don't trust your friends too close. Sometimes, you know, and this is a true story, I'm going to say it again because I think it's very, very interesting. Some people don't realize that their friends' marriages didn't work, and those are the people they're asking advice from. Have you ever thought of that? So your, this poor sister, her marriage hasn't worked at all and she is the one giving advice to every single person about how to make their marriages work. It may, it may happen if she's now learned a lesson, but sometimes they advise you so that you can sit exactly where they are sitting. May Allah protect us. And that having been said, I need to qualify my statement. Wallahi, those who might have gone through divorce, men and women, it does not make you bad. It doesn't mean you're bad. It just means two good people didn't get along because one drank only water and the other one drank only coke. Allah, Allah, Allah. That's what it means. It's a nice way of putting it. To say, you perhaps had different inclinations, you are lovely people, we don't deny that. Sometimes if you've had weaknesses, pick up on them and fix them up. It's like a, a motor vehicle being battered. Then, you know, you'd like to repair the vehicle if you know that this is where the problem lies. But you cannot keep on jerking down the M6 or until you get to Birmingham when you know that it's just a small little spark plug that needs changing. Allahu Akbar. And this is why we say some marriages, there's no spark at all. The word spark plug brought, brought a lot for me to say, subhanAllah. You know, we look at a spark, sometimes the spark is the spark of the devil. We heard moments ago how really people get to meet each other sometimes in a very wrong environment, totally wrong. And then they, they want to marry each other and they, they want to halalize it. That's a word that I've just concocted, but... They want to halalize it. It means they want to bring it from where it was and make it halal. Fair and good. Yes, we know what you're trying to do. We know you're living in the environment. But there's one thing you're forgetting. Engage in a lot of istighfar for what you did so that you can clean your slate. Did you hear that? And this is a practical solution. Because if I'm going to tell you right now, you guys are doomed for good because you know you met in the nightclub. Brother, you can make tawbah for the fact that you were in the nightclub. And sister, you can make tawbah for that as well. Allah will forgive you, turn your life, 
But if you have not asked for forgiveness, you just sowed the seeds and you're watering the seeds of evil. That's what's happening. You plow it out and, and inshallah plant it properly. How do you plow it out? Engage in tawbah. Say, Allah, the way we got married was wrong. Forgive us for what we've done and let's start here in your obedience. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. Let me go back. Back to the time of Adam alayhi salatu was salam. He was alone. He was one. He was lonely. He made a dua. He asks Allah to take his loneliness away. And suddenly when he got up, this is according to Ibn Kathir, rahmatullahi alayhi, he's made mention of this in Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya. And he says when he got up, he noticed someone looking similar to him, but slightly different. Uh, similar meaning the same species. And he asks her a question, Lima khuliqti? Who are you firstly? She says, I am Hawa. It's an interesting name. Hawa means someone created from something living. And Adam is someone created from soil. Soil is dead, as you know. So this is why women tend to speak a bit more than men. You know, alive, mashallah. <laughs> created from something living, subhanAllah. And men created from something dead. But believe me, really, it's the soil. Anyway, that was on a lighter note. What we need to get to understand is, today, sometimes it's the other way around. You find the man nagging. Really, I, I didn't know this and I wouldn't have believed it had we not been involved in trying to resolve people's matters. And he's nagging every day. You didn't do this, you did that. Brother, relax, take it easy. The water we heard about moments ago needs to be in your mouth, brother. No. So, Adam alayhi salam was given Hawa alayhi salatu was salam as a gift. As a gift, really. And there is one point I want to raise about that before we move on to more points. They were together, they were, he, she says, Li askuna ilayk, I was created in order to give you comfort. So this is the main aim of husband and wife and marriage is supposed to be to achieve comfort. Comfort and love between one another. Allah says in the Quran, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ From amongst the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that He has created for you from amongst you, that your spouse, in order that you may achieve comfort from her and He has placed love and He has placed the, the comfort and love between the two of you and these are signs for those who ponder. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us understand. So the two of them were very happy. They were living, mashallah, in the place that Allah had chosen for them until one day the devil came along. And this is a powerful point if you just lend me your ears for a few moments. Devil comes along and he says, do you know if you eat from this, what is forbidden? The reason why it's forbidden is because you will live forever, you will have kingdom or, you know, that which does not deplete and so on. Should I show you, should I show you to, you know, this tree where if you eat from it, you will definitely be from amongst those uh, who will live forever, you know, because he was already told you are going to live for a thousand years. So you will live for longer than that. And at the same time, you will have kingdom that does not deplete. You will own that which does not deplete. And so shaitan came to try and divert them. There is a debate. If you look at the people of the book, they debate who was first. Was it Hawa or was it Adam? In Islam, the truth is, although in the past we have read the, what is known as the Israeli riwayat, the narrations of the people of the book, which say that the woman was to blame, the, in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of both of them together. They both ate from it. Allah didn't say he ate and she followed or she ate and he followed. No, they both ate. Which means let's not play the blame game. There is a problem, don't play the blame game. What was the result? Let's look at it. When they disobeyed Allah, something made them disobey. Shaitan tried and neither one of them helped the other to abstain. That is the point I'm raising. When we live with one another, it's our duty as husband and wife to remind the other of their duty unto Allah. 
so that we can be protected from shaitan. We're going to make the same mistakes again. And this, this, this story is not in the Quran for no reason. It's there for a reason. What is the reason? So that I can learn. If I am not going to guide my spouse and keep on reminding her to read her salah, her link with Allah, to dress appropriately, to stop haram and so on, whether she gets irritated or not, I might suffer a great loss the same way my forefather, who was Adam alayhi salam, suffered when neither of the two reminded them that wasn't this the tree that Allah prohibited you eating from? And they both ate. So one of the disasters was the spouses did not remind one another for whatever reason Allah knew and Allah intended something from it. So we don't hold it against them. But at the same time, we have a lesson to learn from it. And the same applies, my brother, if your wife keeps on reminding you of salah and your dress code and not to engage in haram and not to flirt and not to be on your phone and not to... I've been speaking about it every other day because I, I found out something very recently about it, pornography. A lot of good people sometimes who have so many good habits spoil it by being hooked onto pornography because it's easy access. Brother, wallahi, it does you no good. Wallahi, it's worse than having eaten from that tree. It is something totally prohibited. Like when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was transgressed by those, by Adam alayhi salam and Hawa, and that was even for reasons known to Allah, he wanted something, he wanted something out of the whole thing. But when that happened, they, they, they suffered a loss in that they were removed from the goodness they were in and thrown into the dunya, thrown into the world. What would happen to us, we would also be removed sometimes from some of the mercy of Allah that we might be enjoying as a result of our sin. So believe me, if your spouse reminds you of not doing bad, not engaging in bad habits, not doing this and that, be happy. Thank Allah, that is part of your marriage. Be happy if your husband or your wife continues telling you how to dress and how you should have your link with Allah and be careful of this company and that company and you know, watch out of what you are doing. Wallahi, it is something that is good. What time do you come home, my brother? Why do you come home every day? If your spouse is telling you, please try and come home early, don't say, you're nagging. No, she's not nagging, she's being honest. Allahu Akbar. Many homes, the neighbor's excited because the, uh, the guy hasn't come home early. He tells you, what time are you coming, lad? 10 o'clock. Okay, I'll be at your home until 9. You don't even know what I said. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Allah protect us. And I hope you are as innocent as we made it out to be. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Why should we facilitate for the neighbor by coming late? And I'm saying neighbor because obviously we're talking of, you know, just an example. You're supposed to be there. I had, I had a message that someone sent me which was very, very strong. I think it was last month sometime. And I really thought of it because initially when I read it, I said, no, this is something. You know, people, people forward you anything and everything. Believe me. Sometimes a forward doesn't make sense at all. And people forward it to you and they're excited about it. But sometimes it makes some sense and it's tailor-made for you. So he says, if you don't tell your spouse I love you, someone else is saying it to them already. And I was like, what? I better say, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> If you don't care, someone else is caring. If you, if you just make her dream, someone's fulfilling the dreams. Allahu Akbar. So this is what we need to be worried about. That might not be true. It's just a message. But think about it. There is a person that you got married to. You are supposed to be making them feel like the world is theirs. And if you're not doing it, you're wasting their life. Believe me, their life is being wasted. This is why I say, subhanallah, you need to make sure that you work on your marriage. You work on your marriage. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. So we learned a lesson from what happened to Adam alayhi salatu wa salam. When they came into the dunya, thereafter, it is reported, it is reported that subhanallah, they did not have any difficulty in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way Allah had prescribed upon them their own sharia and whatever Allah had sent down to them. And the two were very supportive of one another. Because why? why? They already know shaitan came to us once, we, we suffered the loss. Now, we don't want to do that. We will be living in the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With us, shaitan comes once, twice, three times, four times, ten times. We fall in the trap and sometimes we don't even have an intention to, to turn. And the wife is suffering because poor husband is busy cheating on her. And this brings us to this point. If you're cheating on your spouse, you are cheating on Allah. Because, wallahi, what is the term cheating? When you are involved in haram, you know what happens? A typical scenario is a guy is caught on his phone or anywhere else, you know, with someone whom he's not supposed to be with. And he says, you know what? I'm a Muslim. I can get her as my wife. That's a typical answer. I can engage in, I can, you know, a polygamous marriage and so on. I don't know what went wrong here, brother. 
They don't like the topic of polygamy, I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> can we swap with that one if you want? If it's not okay, so, you sure? So, yeah. I'm okay, I, I, I don't have that fright, you know, I, we will stop it and change it if you want to. You let me know, inshallah. Can we speak about polygamy, Shane? <laughs> so, he will say that, you know what, I, I, I can marry her, so you keep quiet, it's got nothing to do with you. Brother, relax. You're not yet married to her and I don't think you have the guts to. So what you're doing here is just cheating. And you're using Islam to actually justify your infidelity and your adultery. What is this? How can you use Islam? That spouse who keeps on reminding you, hey, watch out. Wallahi, she's a blessing. Why do you keep on using Islam and saying, I can, I can. What can you? You can. You can do what? You can fly a plane? You first need to be a pilot. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. May Allah bless us. So why I say this is, if you're cheating on your spouse, cheating, Wallahi, you're cheating on Allah in the sense that Allah's rules are there. And Allah, we cannot hide from Him. So why do that? You cannot be a good Muslim if you're cheating. You know, this is why, Wallahi, the sweetness of lowering your gaze is not tasted until you lower it for a whole year, I think. You know, when you lower it thoroughly, properly, and you make sure you lower it every time, and you say, Ya Allah, I'm doing this. This is a payment for my paradise, Ya Allah. I'm looking down for your sake. You start tasting a sweetness. When you taste that sweetness, oh, it's, it's, it's your second nature to just look down. Subhanallah. No matter how irritated some people get, because some women, what happens to them? They dress to kill. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> they dress to kill. And so they walk with a sound that is there to look for you to look at that dress so that you die. What dies in you? When they say dress to kill, your happiness is gone because subhanallah, you were supposed to look down and you didn't. Now you gazed, okay? And you carried on looking and you kept on looking and then you started saying, but back home I don't have this. <laughs> it's a reality. So what happened? You have something much more sacred. You have something much more sacred. You have the mother of your children. You have a person who's dedicated. She's cooked there waiting for you. She's probably cleaned the whole house from top to bottom. And here you are saying at home, I don't have this. Allahu Akbar. Look at how bad it is. It started with a little gaze. And what you followed it up. So when you look down, you are content. I give glad tidings to those really who want to taste contentment. And they have said, Wallahi, what I've got at home is far better. Subhanallah. You know, it's just that we have nothing against China. Or oh, I could have given you an example of Chinese products. Sometimes they shine. The minute you buy it, you know, I, 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 you might have heard me giving you the example of the, the wedding. Okay, let me say it, inshallah. They say there was a man. And obviously this is an example in order for us to learn a lesson that not everything that glitters is actually gold. There was a man who was very stingy and he had a wedding in his home. So he decides, okay, let me start. I've got to start spending money, you know. And so the East, he, he bought from the corner of the street a, a box of fans. You know those Chinese fans, they open them up like this and there's a fan. So he says, what's the price here? So the young man says, one P. Says, one P? Okay, I'll take the whole box. So he took the whole box and he went home. So he had 400 of them. The wife says, wow, what's this? No, we're going to have guests. Each one can have one of these. So she says, all right. And he went back to work. So she decided, let me open it and see what it's all about. She opens one, she tries it, and as she did this, it broke. Put it down. So she picked up the next one. As she did that, it broke. She put it down. And then she says, no, this thing needs to be returned. Because this is not. You know, it looks so, so nice. So smart. But it's breaking. Every time I'm trying, two of them are broken. I don't want. So the husband comes back. You know what? These things are breaking. So husband takes one. It broke. That's the third one broken. He takes another one. It broke. Fourth one broken. Oh. Now what happened? He says, don't worry. He took the box. He went back to the corner. He tells the guy, hey, I bought this box from you and this is what's happening. He says, how much did you pay for this? He says, 1p each. He says, okay, there's the one for 10p. Maybe that's the one you want. He says, what do you mean? He says, you bought it for 1p. You didn't read the instructions. What's the instruction? He says, okay, let me show it to you. He says, okay, open it. So he opens the thing. He says, all right, put it in front of your face. Says, now move your face. <laughs> If you want to pay 1p, that's the type of thing you get. But it glitters. It really glitters. If you have married someone with the name of Allah and whatever you went through, you've taken her sacredly. She will help you and she will be with you and it will, it will not just break like that. But if you want to go for that which glitters, your head will move from left to right and you still won't get the wind of the fan. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. This is a point I've raised.
There we are, mashallah. <laughs> Drilling the wall, or <laughs> you can swap it, Chip, with that one. It's okay. You can give it to me in my hand, Chip. I don't know. Just take the thing out and give it in my hand. I'll be back in a few moments. Or so. <laughs> okay, there we are, inshallah. I hope that's better. Don't worry, inshallah. Uh, this is what happens sometimes. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala grant us goodness and accept it from us. So. We were saying that sometimes when a person does not realize and understand the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon them, they lose it. In order to understand that this is a gift of Allah, you need to have a link with Allah. You will never understand the value of your spouse unless you have a link with Allah. When you have a link with Allah, you begin to realize that love is connected to the sacrifice this person is making for me. You know, your husband goes out, he works, he brings back money, he, you, you have so much to live with, your clothes and so on and what else. Uh, nowadays, especially in a country like this, more than one pe person is working in, from, you know, in order to try and make ends meet and so on. And we wouldn't like to lose focus on the fact that there are people who are making so much effort so that our life can be comfortable. We have children, we have people who will look after our children. How then can we be diverted? By the devil, the same shaitan coming to us and telling us, you know what, she is better and that one is better and he is better. And these people are not connected to you. They have not even got that halal link with you. And at the same time, you have no clue besides what they look like and maybe their voice and maybe a few words that they may have uttered. And nowadays, not even that, just a few SMSs they may have sent you and everything is over. Subhanallah. And our marriages are broken. Our children are lost. Everything is completely, you know, over. This is the way things are happening in some homes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to understand and recognize and realize the value of our spouses. For indeed, the spouse, the value of a spouse is such that if you realize it and work upon that level, you will be able to help generations to remain as the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, your life, your marriage is not just for yourself. It is collectively as part and parcel of the Ummah. The Prophet says, Tazawwaju al waduda al walud. Fa inni mubahim bikum al umma ma yawm al qiyamah. I'd like you to marry, get married to those who are loving and childbearing. I would like to be through you that Nabi who has the maximum number or the most number of followers. So, what's the point of marrying someone and having children in a way that they are very distant from Muhammad? We need to try. Guidance is in the hands of Allah. But the trial is in your hands, the trial is in my hands, the rest is in the hands of Allah. We haven't even tried. So brothers and sisters, we need to know from the beginning, your choice of a spouse, we've already heard a few words about it. But remember, your choice of a spouse will make you or break you. Your choice of a spouse determines the rest of your life. That's what it does. Your choice of a spouse will actually also play a very big role in the type of children you will be having. It's not a condition, but it will play a big role. So make sure you've made the right decisions. And I'm sure we've heard quite a bit about this just before I spoke. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. And here we go again. <laughs> Habibi, this is not a question and answer session, but what I can tell you is that the, the, the microphone has given you the benefit of it. And I'm a person, you know, uh, it's difficult to say no. So inshallah, we will say. The brother is saying those who have daughters and not sons. I can quickly make mention of this, that whatever Allah has blessed you with, you need to be happy. You need to be happy with it. And it's a clear verse in the Quran. لِلَّهِ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ يَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ إِنَاثًا وَيَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ الذُّكُورَ أَوْ يُزَوِّجُهُمْ ذُكْرَانًا وَإِنَاثًا وَيَجَعَلُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ عَقِيمًا It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He creates what He wants. Some He only gives females. Some He only gives males. Some He gives them both male and female. And some... He gives them nothing, no children. That's Allah, His plan. When you have daughters, they are your means of entry into paradise. When you have sons, they are your means of entry into paradise. When you have both, 
daughters and sons, they are your means of entry into paradise if you work with them. When you have none and you have surrendered to the decree of Allah, they are your means of entry into paradise. For that situation is the means of entry into paradise by you accepting what Allah has chosen for you. So each one of us, Allah is in charge. Allah is in control. Allah knows what He will do and He knows why He is doing what He is doing. So we need to be happy with that. At the same time, we have a difficulty where sometimes culture overtakes religion when it is not supposed to be the case. So culture makes you think that, you know, I've got a daughter, let me sit home and let me wait for proposals. I always say, let me look at the ceiling and see when it's cracking so that a proposal might drop from the ceiling. <laughs> Allah, it doesn't happen that way. Who knows about your daughter? You need to get up. You go to the masjid, don't you? You see so many people, don't you? You need to trust a few people to say, I've got a daughter and I'd really like you to, you know, uh, to see what, how best we can get her married. You need to have the concern. I've got a sister. For example, I've got a relative and so on. Or you see a young lad and you notice him reading salah with you every day. You might have a chat with him. You know him more. You need to open your mouth. You need to ask him who his folks are. You need to ask him who his family is and so on. And if you feel it is okay, you need to allow them to get married. Subhanallah. Or facilitate for them. So don't think just because culture has the clutches on you that I need to sit and wait. And you know, men must come only to present to the girls because... Tomorrow when her marriage breaks, I don't want them to say, you know, you gave the daughter. But I want them to say, we came to beg for her. That's stupidity. I've sat with people and they've told me the reason we do this is for this. If that is the case, wallahi, it is foolishness. Complete foolishness. People sometimes don't understand. Another very important point. We spoke a few moments ago, I'm sure you heard about the issue of gays and so on that was being raised. Now we are living in trying times. I'm sure you know that. And I'm going to word it very carefully because, you know, we, we wouldn't like to uh, trample on people's feet. But at the same time, what I want you to know is when your child comes to you, point number one, and wants to marry someone, if it is a person of the opposite sex, say Alhamdulillah. <laughs> I'm not joking with you. We have come across cases where it is not. And then there is a disaster. So if your child comes to you and they want to marry a person of the opposite sex, Alhamdulillah. If they want to marry someone who is prepared to become a Muslim, say Alhamdulillah. If they want to marry someone who is already a Muslim, say Nurun ala Nur, Alhamdulillah ala dhan. It's even more better. And if they want to marry someone whom you are so happy and proud of their choice, then you need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much. So what we are saying is, each one of us has a dream. I have children. We have dreams for our children. We'd like them to marry people of a certain category, which means who can help them with their deen and understand and bring up their children and so on and so forth. And you have your dream. But as time passes, who knows that dream might have to be adjusted. We, we may adjust the dream. You know, the small adjustments are easier to accept than the big ones. Sometimes we doom our children because we're just blocking their marriages for no Islamic reason. And we're living in a country where it's quite difficult. We know of some people, they have promised each other we'll never marry anyone besides each other. So now they're 30, 35, 40, and father's wondering what the hell is going on here? But you're not so close to your son, so you don't know. You're not close to your daughter, so you don't know. And it brings us to another point. When we want to live in marital bliss, the children we have, develop a good link with them. Talk to them. You know, you don't have to scream and yell at them every time. Talk to them. Help them. Be their friend and their parent at the same time. There's a difference between an open friend, because obviously you're a father, you're a mother. You have to have some form of a line. But at the same time, you need to be close enough for them to relate to you as to their inclinations, so you can guide them. But if you have, you know, a cat and mouse relation, as the cat comes in, the mouse is gone. Allahu Akbar. If that's the case, wallahi, we're not going to get anywhere. We won't be able to. We are living the reality. We're not living a dream. Things are happening around us which are not as per our liking. They are no longer. So we have to do what is known as sajidu wa qaribu. Try and make the best of the situation you are in. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all. So that is also a duty. We help our children, we guide them, we talk to them, we know them. And we understand what they are saying. I know of one father, he asked his son, son, would you like to get married? He says, yes. He says, well, look, there are two things I've got in mind. One is this and one is that. Two days later, son comes back and says, not interested in getting married anymore. He says, son, that means you've got someone in mind. As simple as that. Straight. So why don't you tell us and we might facilitate it for you. So the son came up with the, you know, with whatever he had. 
and wallahi salute, meaning I, I would like to salute that father. And he, he actually got everything done and facilitated, although it was not to his liking. He said, son, I'm not so excited about your choice, but the choice is yours. So if you've made a choice, Muslimin or someone ready to accept Islam, we, you know, it is second best. Best would be if you were to be within our own uh, thinking uh, or as a father. Second best perhaps to a father. But Islamically, who knows, that revert sister might be far better than one dozen of people who were born Muslim. We have seen it with our own eyes. We have seen people who have reverted to Islam later on in their 20s and 30s. Wallahi, they have, they have known what the darkness is all about. So sometimes it's a point of mercy of Allah. They come into the light and they are stronger than me and you. They wouldn't miss a tahajjud. Subhanallah. And with us, the Hajjid, we are snoring, we'd be lucky if we caught our Fajr. Allahu Akbar. People who are born Muslim don't realize the value of Salah. Others who spent the nights in nightclubs before, today, they will say we need to recompense by spending the night in the worship of Allah. It's happening. So do not underestimate. Sometimes it happens for a reason. People will revert. People, you know, people say, no, I'm not happy. You know, what am I going to do facing my, my people? So facing your community comes before helping your child solve the problem. Is that what it is? You're worried about your face in the community. You're not worried about the sin that you're allowing to continue because you cannot take people up in, in this free world today. Your child will have to leave the home for something. We need to make sure we, answer, we, we realize we are answerable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah protect us and may He grant us goodness. May He open our doors. So this is part and parcel of the decision of, make, of, of getting married and how important it is to choose, how important it is to facilitate for the child. And thereafter, when we do get married, remember, you need to build your marriage on trust, number one. You need to trust one another for the sake of Allah. And trust is developed when you have a link with your maker. You, 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 you have a link with your maker, this is when trust will be developed. When you do not have a link with your maker, you, you don't even trust yourself. How do you think you are going to be able to develop the trust within your own spouse? And when we say this, you don't need to go prying in the life of your spouse, especially when things are okay, things are moving well. You don't need to go prying. Each one might have a small weakness between them and Allah, which is a lot of the time the face. They come out of it very quickly. But when you start prying, when everything is normal, you might create a mountain out of a molehill. Because every single person, shaitan comes to them, myself and yourselves. So sometimes you might have one or two things you might have done you're not too proud about, you don't want your spouse to know. Yes, Allah knows and you've made tawbah and you've come out of it. Now your spouse finds out two weeks later, a month later, if your spouse makes a disaster, it's now creating something bigger. You don't realize this person's already engaged in tawbah, their slate is clean and so on. The time you may want to know what's going on is when your rights are being usurped. Now you know, this is my right, he's being usurped. This man no, never comes, this woman doesn't talk to me. This woman, this is happening. That, what's happening? Is there something going on? If there is, please let me know. So we are not, we as Muslimin do not teach our fellow brothers and sisters to go and pry into the phones and the, you know, the systems and the accounts of your spouse for no reason. No, it's not your life. It's their life. Believe me, you wouldn't like someone spying on you. Don't spy on them, especially when they are fulfilling your rights. But at the same time, if your rights are not being fulfilled, you might... So I see some people want to, want to pry in their phones still, inshallah. Every time the microphone goes down, I think to myself, someone's cursing me there. Allah, Allah safeguard us. So, what happens is, sometimes, a person becomes so secretive with their mobile phone and so on, that they give it away, that I'm doing something wrong. In that case... You have given reason for someone to doubt you. This is now where you are now at fault. Why do you give reason for someone to doubt you? You should have things open and okay. Brothers, are you prepared to give your phones to the brother next to you and say, go through it? Never ever. I don't think any one of us seated here would... would oh, mashallah, brothers are already here. Is that okay? I'll come to you. Wallahi, they are. I see a, quite a few brothers have put their hands, so maybe I can swallow back what I said. But the point being raised is, so many people have it such that, Wallahi, they've got so much filth on their phones, they would be embarrassed for some human being to see the phone. What type of link do we have? Where is it? What's happening? What type of a marriage do you want to have? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us such that we can cut out that which is haram from our mobile phones, because today, a mobile phone really 
it says a lot about you and your life. If you really want to know someone, tell him, just pass me your phone, brother. <laughs> if he can throw it to you straight and say, this is my code, or I don't even have a code, you need to tell yourself, mashallah. <laughs> but brother, don't be fooled. He's got the other phone in his pocket. <laughs> what happens. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. You know, people are good. Shaitan is bad. So let's help one another inshallah in the obedience of Allah. Learn to trust yourself. Trust your spouse. And don't give reason to others not to trust you as we said. Point number two, we need to spend maximum time with our spouses and our children. Maximum time. At home. The hadith speaks about an najah. Najah meaning savior. What is it that will result in your savior? The Prophet ﷺ says, you will be saved with three qualities. Amlik lisana, control your tongue. And controlling your tongue would actually filter through to what you type and what you say. It's all part of your tongue. If you've actually sent a message, don't think for a moment that I can swear because this is not my tongue. lisanu al fuadi dalila. The tongue is actually evidence as to what your heart holds. So that's what the tongue is for. The same applies to an SMS or a message. It is evidence as to what your heart holds. So you will be responsible just as you are for your tongue for the use of your mobile phone and the use of anything else. So be careful. The hadith says, firstly, control your tongue. Secondly, cry over your sin. When you've committed a sin, weep over it. Cry over it. Regret over your sin. That's, that's how you'll be successful. When you regret over your sin and you promise not to do it again, you'll be successful. And thirdly, find your home spacious. What does that mean? That means spend maximum time at home. You need to go out. You're either going to work. You might want to socialize within specific limits. Or you want to go, inshallah, you know, for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're going somewhere, perhaps masjid, perhaps to meet someone, you know, for purposes of deen and so on, inshallah. But besides that, you find yourself at home. You know, you might want to go to study. You might go here, there. Your timetable is this. Your free time, spare time. Come home, take your spouse along. Perhaps your children, spend time with them, talk to them. And that will really go a long way in boosting your marriage. You know, we have a tick list. When marriages don't work, you ask a few questions. And you can tick it off. And you see, time is one of the biggest breakers of marriages. Because we don't spend it there. <coughs> Now, once we trust one another, we need to know, subhanallah, the expressions you have on your face and the statements you make from your mouth go a long way in a happy home. So if you come home and you find, for example, I give you a typical example of a man. If a man comes home and he sees his wife every day, you know, looking very sad and she's upset and so, wallahi, it's just a matter of time before that marriage will be on the rocks. Believe me. Why? Because he comes back home and she's frowning. She's, if she, you need to say, what's wrong? Are, are you sick? Are you not well? Is your head not okay? Is there something wrong? Did I do something or say something? The poor guy will be begging you on his knees. Please tell me what's wrong. For one night, two nights, third night, he said, you know what? I'm spending it outside. We don't do that. If you want to have what we call a popo face, subhanallah, which means a really a face that is scrunched up and so on, you need to explain why it is the case. If it is an act of charity to smile at the face of your fellow Muslim, then to smile at the face of your own spouse is an even bigger act of worship. Subhanallah. Have you thought of that? If it's a charity for me to smile at you now, what about my wife? I need to show her even my false teeth. Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Sometimes this shaitan comes and overtake us. As soon as we leave the home, we're smiling. You see anyone, we're smiling. Go back into the house and be frowning. What is this? Your expressions are a sadaqa. Do you know that? To, and to give this warmth within your home is a sadaqa. To utter words of goodness is a sadaqa. Wallahi, a good word is an act of charity. The Prophet ﷺ says this. A good word, to utter it, is an act of charity. So speak properly. Subhanallah. When we are outside and we see people making a mistake, we correct them so well. We correct them so well. But come home, we get upset. You made one mistake and I'm angry. I'm uptight. I'm angry. Why is that the case? So we need to make sure that inshallah, when we are correcting our spouses back at home or our children back at home, be calm, take it easy, relax. Yesterday in London, I mentioned a point that some of the brothers told me later on. And this is a very interesting point. We didn't think of it this way. 
I said, brother, you turned to Allah at the age of 25, 30, whatever. It took you 20, 30 years to turn to Allah. Why do you give people three minutes to turn to Allah? And they, these people are like this and like that, and you haven't yet even tried. You took 20 years and you turned slowly, mashallah. Now that you're strong on the deed, everyone else is gone. And you're not even giving them more than three minutes, yet you took 30 years. This is something we need to learn. Because in your house, when you get hidayah, and you start reading your salah after there was no salah in that home. Mashallah, it's very good. But remember, just like it took you time, the, sh the same torch that lit for you to see the path, light it for them. Light it for them. Show them nicely. Show them your character has improved. Your conduct has improved. Everything has improved. I can give you stories of reverts who turn to Islam with their families dead against them. Some of them say, within the space of one year, the families accepted us completely and totally because we showed them the beauty of Islam. They saw that we're no longer on drugs, we're no longer in the clubs, we're no longer gambling, we're no longer dressing inappropriately, we come home with a smile, we bring flowers and that for our parents and we do this and do that. We still listen to them and they say, oh wow, this is the best of my children. This is the deal. This is Islam. So Islam will take you very, very far if you are ready to adopt it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept for us the deen. And this deen, Allah has kept in it the solutions of everything. And one of the most important things is getting together in nikah. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept it such that it is known as a sacred union. It's not, you know, something that you just get together. Like what's happening on the globe now. When you want to break off, and you carry on to someone else. You know, you go to there and there and there. No, that's not how it is. It's something sacred. It's a union that Allah has blessed us with. We say the name of Allah, we've taken them with the name of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and open our doors. Really, the, the issue of marriage is something that is, as I started, I said it's a hot topic. Wallahi, it's a hot topic. And it is so hot that even married people, sometimes, to be honest, they may have lived for so many years as a couple, but they still don't know what marriage is all about. They don't know. They think that, you know, it's a perpetual honeymoon way. You just sit back, relax. You know, you can be, you can laze around. No, marriage is full of sacrifice. Remember that. Take it home with you. Marriage is sacrifice. Your happiness in marriage depends on how much you're ready to sacrifice for Allah and for your family. If you are ready to sacrifice, marriage will work. If you're not, believe me, it cannot work. Nobody is interested in a person who's not ready to sacrifice for them. Allahu Akbar. You know, we have disasters of people. Sometimes they say, I was talking to a friend of mine, and, I, and we were discussing this matter. They say, you know, we met, in, we met at the university. And so, we ended up getting married. And this guy was the ideal guy. But when we got married, six months later, the marriage broke. But now, what went wrong? I can tell you what went wrong. You met in an environment that was common to both of you. But you had two totally different understandings, totally different upbringings. There was no compatibility. But because you were in an environment where perhaps there was something in common, your studies were in common and the venue, the place. So you perhaps went to the canteen together, you ate together, you came back together, you studied together and so on. The day you went to his house or he went to yours to live was when you realized, whoa, this is a totally different person. This person, because now the environment is a reality. It's no longer a varsity environment. The environment is now no longer uh, something that we have in common because of studies. So there's nothing left in common. Nothing at all. The, 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 the whole system of operation is different in his home compared to yours. So now the thing doesn't work. So when I was speaking to the brother, he says, Hey, I have married someone from varsity and my marriage is working well. I said, you are one of the lucky ones. God like grant us goodness. One of the lucky ones. So you could be lucky. We're not saying no and we're not saying yes. There is no specific item to say, you tick this off, you're going to be happy in marriage. The only thing we can do is to tell you these are the guidelines of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa You're ready to follow them. There is a greatest chance of you succeeding if you do it genuinely and if your spouse has a similar concern. Sometimes you get married. You've got everything in line, subhanAllah. So, you know, she is pious, she is this, she is that, she might be good looking, she might have this and that, and mashallah, the deen is overriding, the character is great. What about you? What about you? So I want to end over. There we are, mashallah. The last statement I want to say, my brothers and sisters, is 
you are looking for a spouse of a certain standard. Is that standard of a spouse looking for someone like you? That's the question. Have you heard that? You are looking for a spouse of a certain standard. Is that standard of a spouse looking for someone like you? That's the ultimate question you need to answer yourself. And then inshallah you live by it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness the brother with the sound. We really appreciate it. The reason is, no, I'm honest with you. The reason is, uh, I think perhaps because we are quite a few, someone may have sat on one of the, the wires and so on. So we'll, we will look for you an excuse. And we will still thank you, my brother. Really. And imagine if, if we can look for an excuse for this brother. Because honestly, I'm thinking it's, it's such a good sound system, alhamdulillah. And there are a lot of us, people might be sitting on a wire or two that may be making it make a sound. We can look for an excuse for him. Brothers and sisters, go back home and look for tens of excuses for your spouses. And inshallah, you have a happy home, happy marriage. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah, wa bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdihi. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi.